How's it going guys? We're out here in La La today. Um, I've got my mate here, Andy, with his KLR 250R. It's a uh, 1990. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty awesome bike kickstart. I've never really seen one of these on the road at all. And I think the first time I rode with Andy, um, yeah, I wasn't sure what it was. And uh, But it's an awesome bike and Andy really takes it places um, he probably shouldn't, which is quite awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's done a few things to it and this just shows you, I reckon this is probably the original WR250R, to be honest. Um, it's kickstart as well, like I said, so let's get into it and um, we'll look at all the changes and modifications and we'll get to know Andy's bike a bit. All right, so Andy, you've got a few electronics and things going here. Yes, so uh, um, I'll start with uh, the most important one, heated grips, EPA Spatial. $20. $20, yeah, eBay, yeah. But uh, yeah, it keeps me uh, warm on the high countries. Okay, because it's quite a hard grip, actually. Yep. It's not it's um... hard, and uh, it's actually road. It's got five settings. Oh, okay. So... Oh, it's got a rotary door yeah. sort of a thing. So it's very easy to, to okay. turn on. Nice. Um, the other thing is hour meter. <clears throat> because I surface my bikes using hour meter. So okay. 50 hours, I change the oil, etc. And because I, I don't like speedometers, I turn it off. And oh, so it's only done three. See, it's only done 280. What? Yeah, it's a 30 year old bike and it's got 2,800 <laughs> kilometers on it. Plus 138 hours. Oh, so that's what. It's good for resale. Yeah. Resale value. <laughs> oh, it's never been going to be sold. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no one can ask that. So um, the other thing is just a 12 volts plug to do repair and stuff like that, air pump, um, USB charger, and this is all, this is actually from AliExpress and it's got the voltage. Okay, which oh the voltage readout, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's quite handy. And on off to me. Yeah. switch as well yeah. on the top. So, so is this ID, relayed or is it hard no, wired? No, directly to okay. the battery. Right. And the idea is if something goes wrong with the alternator, I would see it before I go yeah. deep into the bus and just return to civilization, I suppose. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> the rest is just, uh, oh, this is a wireless charger for the phone, Wendy for GPX. So is this a X mount or is it another uh, like This is like uh, AliExpress okay. X all mount. Right. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, about $40 gives you all the wireless charging and all. Oh, everything, so yeah, yeah. you think it's got a, it's got a USB as well, so okay. it's got everything basically for the price. Because so. I think the mounts usually are about $40 just for the yeah, actual yeah. RAM mount itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. This works fine so far and just all my Your GoPro, GoPro remote. I like to record. And these as well, these I think are oh, the yeah. same as Cornet's actually, they're just really this easy. This is $20 eBay, but this is actually better than the original. As you can see, you can move it when you go to the bus. Yeah. It's actually quite flexible. Yeah, I so think these are also it. a lot cheaper than those, um, like the ones I have, which use the RAM mount yeah. and everything. Yeah. They, they're they quite expensive and I mean, these are quicker actually yeah. to move. Easy. Um, and also when you return them after you've been in the bush, they go right back to the same place. Yeah. Whereas with mine, I have to, yeah. <laughs> you know, make right. sure I screw it properly in the right place. And then you've got some, just some ego. Yeah, so basically uh, I want to keep everything as stock as possible because this is sort of classic. Yeah. All the stuff that I've done, the rest of it is basically to to preserve it. So, for example, the fender. Yeah. The fender is after just an aftermarket yeah. one okay. because I want to keep the the original. Yeah. And just to look. Uh, so, just off topic, do you find it hard to get parts for this? Then is that why you're trying to preserve it? Or yeah, well, because this is 30 year old. Yeah. Obviously, you can't buy new. Yeah. Uh, you need to find the uh, new old stock or okay. eBay or records. But so far, I haven't needed to do that. Well, thankfully, cross fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You haven't had to do it yet. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's look at the middle of the bike then. We'll move yeah. on. All right. This seat it looks stock. Yeah, so as you notice, this is all stock. Um, the seat, you notice this is very wide. And it is a big comfy. seat. Yeah. And this is because I think it, Kawasaki made this bike sort of a cross between road and the actual motocross, which is KLX. Yeah. So this is KLR. Okay, so um, some parts from KLR. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a nice stock seat. I mean, it's, seriously, yeah. guys, it's like this wide. I'll show you a photo. <laughs> it's very comfy. It's... I think it's more comfy than some of the road bikes yeah. I've seen. So, yeah. 
And um, so this same thing here, you've taken the plastic off yeah, to preserve it? Yeah, I still it? have all the original. Okay. It's quite in a uh, mint condition. Yeah. Uh, so I want to just just keep it. It's not needed in the in the bus. So. Yeah. And I suppose the one main thing about this bike is this lever here, the kickstart, kickstart only. Yes, that's a, it's a plus and minus. The plus is it will always turn on. Yeah. <laughs> the minus is sometimes it doesn't turn on too quickly. So. Or if you're on the side of a hill. Yeah, exactly. No, so yeah, it's a bit hard to, to kickstart it. But this it. bike will start without battery. So that's how, how reliable it is yeah. to speak. Okay, awesome. The other thing, uh, I think the engine, I've, Everything is stock. The only thing I added is what's called a thermo pop. It's from the KLR 60 world. So back in the days, this bike was quite advanced. I think if you remember the TTR and stuff like that, they were uh, air cooled. Yep. This is water cooled, but oh, it's yeah, sort okay. of a quite rudimentary water cooled. So this, let's say, mod provides uh, a little passageway from the engine to the radiator to circulate a little amount of, of fluid. Okay. So, and did you notice uh, actual change in the temperature? Because this yeah. actually has a temperature gauge. Yeah. So in the cold days, with the the original setup, what it does is you get get hot and then once the cold fluid comes in, it goes cold. Oh, and then it gets sort of back swings, up again. And yeah, it creates okay. a like, hot spot. Yeah. So oh. uh, that sort of stabilizes it. It's quite nice that there's so many parts that are interchangeable yeah. um, for it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, let's move to the back then, Andy. And yeah. We'll see what's going on there. Okay, Andy, so um, I suppose first off, what you guys can't see that's on this side, and I'm sure you'll see a photo of it, is your Rotopack uh, fuel. So what's that, five litres that you carry? Yes, it's a five litre uh, eBay Rotopack, so to speak. eBay, it's one of the best brands, to be honest. <laughs> I use it a lot as well. I think this is an eBay bike. Yeah. <laughs> But you've actually mounted it here, so what you guys can't right. see because it's hiding it, but yeah. the frame here, it's uh, what, got two U-bolts? Or... Yeah, so it's, it comes with a with U-bolt, you just mount it there, and it's actually quite strong. I've fallen on it a few times. And yeah, and it doesn't fall it, off. And... It's also nice because it keeps it low, like yeah, the center of gravity, it lowers it, it, it rather yeah. than yeah. having it up here. Yeah. Um, these are some seriously awesome racks, because I don't know if you guys can see, but it's not actually mounted to a foot peg or anything like that. They have another extra brace here, so it's only just this actual metal section here that holds yeah. it on, right? So but this is strong. actually uh, a better product loop, okay. which you can buy a pair with no mounting on it. Ah, okay. This is an old bike, so you can't just buy racks. Yeah. So I bought the loops, because that's the hardest part, and welded just pieces of steel. Oh, so you do it yourself? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really good, actually. It yeah, looks, looks see proper. It, yeah. Because it's all grinded. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. It's yeah, my handy, so, handy work, so and you usually take panniers on that, or just for you know camping? Okay, yeah. so, so so actual panniers or soft bags? Soft, or... just all okay. gear sack. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and yeah, it's also good protection if if I fall. Mm. And he's also running a USB cable here that um, powers his uh, GoPro on the back as well, which is quite cool. I haven't seen that before, to be honest. That's quite a nice little feature. And you got the stock exhaust. Yeah, stock, everything stock. Uh, I really like the sound of this, believe it or not. It, it's very unique. It's actually better sounding than the 650. Okay. It's sort of like this bottle <laughs> sound. And when you do 60, for example, you can't hear anything. It's like floating. Yeah, yeah, it is quite <laughs> a quite, nice, yeah. quiet one. Yeah. You don't have to wear earplugs in there no. all the time. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so this rack behind here, you also made, because that's no, all one piece? That's, or? that's actually what's, well, back in the days, it's, it's quite popular for this bike. It's called an MX rack. Okay. I M M I X. I think I bought the last one from Amazon of the the world, let's say. Yeah. No one can find them after I oh, bought wow. that one. So. Okay. And then you just got your top box on there, your Oxford. Yeah, this is just uh, Oxford. Okay. Just because what I do you like carry in there? So that's just for like today when we're doing a day trip, you can just throw some things yeah. in there or? I like to carry uh, emergency stuff. Okay. I got PL, uh, not the PLP, but uh, tools, tubes, and stuff like that. Okay. I carry my drone, food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is just your actual <laughs> yeah, this specific is actual tool, tool kit. Yeah, yeah this okay. is my survival kit, so I can fix most of the things up to replacing clutch with this. So okay. I'll never leave home without it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. And that's pretty handy to have. I mean, it looks pretty comprehensive. But I mean, yeah, it's quite small, quite good to three know. Kilos, you can so do anything. It, yeah. yeah. All right. 
Um, anything else, Andy, that you can think of that I've missed? Um, I think you would notice the drum brakes. Oh, yeah. So, that's an old style rear brake. It actually works quite well, but because it's old and the drum becomes consumable, yeah. I have to be mindful of using my rear brake, so I just oh, use my wow. front brake that's... more than rear. I'm not sure that's something you want to uh, have to <laughs> yeah, worry about. It, yeah. But uh, not all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just because being a bit once it's gone, it. where, where can I buy this? Yeah, thing? you have to get uh, a new uh, one machined yeah. or something, I suppose. All right, well, on, on that uh, note, let's, let's move down to the bottom and look yeah. around at the engine. Okay. So down here, it looks like you pretty much you have a new, new uh, spring. Is yes, right? so that's, an, that's actually a KLR650 spring. Okay. Thankfully, it fits. Um, it's an 8.2 kilogram spring, I think. Okay. Just because I'm too fat. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice a big difference, right? Yeah. 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 Suspension is one of those things I really think. Yeah, it, it, it makes yeah. a quite big difference and uh, just makes the bike quite sublime to ride. Yeah. yeah. Instead of worrying every time there's big whoops or stuff like so that. So it's going to bottom out. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got a bash plate. And... Yeah, this is a Ricochet bash plate. Um, very well made. And yeah. aluminium or is it it's aluminium okay yeah. just thick aluminium yeah. the original one just uh, plastic you know, yeah just the, the normal sort of yeah. bash plate that doesn't do anything yeah yeah okay awesome um what else so you got stock peg still on it stock brake lever yeah. like you said you, you do like to keep it yeah yeah as i said one thing with this bike is just to make sure uh it's a very easy place to feel the oil the level oil. yeah yeah and make sure because uh, it's very well known that the valve train is quite weak when when it's sort of low the, the oil. Okay. Yeah. So keep it up and it should be okay. So have you found anybody else with this KLR in, in Victoria um, at least? Not personally, or I haven't met anyone riding it. Yeah. But okay. I've seen a few on the marketplace and stuff like that. Okay. So there are there are a few around there. Yeah. So you can always yeah. buy a, a parts bike if you. Yeah, if things suppose, really get yeah. Uh, <laughs> bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll ask you a few other questions, and um, but yeah, that's that's enough for the bike right oh, now, cool. guys. But uh... all right, guys. Well, luckily, um, I've got out here with Andy today because obviously last year with COVID, um, I think nice. I only got a few modified videos out, and then uh, nothing else. And I actually messaged Andy a few days ago and just said. Uh, you know, you're down my way in Otways, and then we plan to come out to LL. So I thought while we're here, let's get to bring the drones out and <laughs> do a little bit of filming. But, um, all right, so anyway, I mean, this is an awesome bike, 30 years old, and you still kept it stock. It kind of just shows you that, like we all know, adventure riding, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a GS or like this, <laughs> you know, a 30 year old 250. Um, these bikes can pretty much get you anywhere if you just take care of them, which you obviously do with this bike a lot. But um, so, what what is the best adventure or best memory you've had with this bike? Um, it's quite a few few trips that I've done, but I think one of the memorable ones are uh, my first camping trip ever on a motorbike. It's actually oh, on nice. this bike. That was I think two two years ago with the group, and uh, we went on Billy Goat, and I think that was <laughs> very scary. Billy Goat was your first yeah. camping trip. And, All right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I barely made it out. Whose ride was that? That was actually your ride. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for that. Sorry. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, it was very memorable. You know, first time camping, first time doing really hard tracks. I wasn't yeah. very experienced at that time. And yeah, I was just amazed at, mm. you know, I, I, if I had taken heavier bike or maybe different bike, I don't know what the yeah different outcome there would be <laughs> but i mean like that's one thing i can say for you as well andy because andy also um puts out a lot of rides on our facebook group as well but i remember one of the first rides we did with andy as well was um actually in cobol we were all on our two-stroke enduros and andy oh yeah that one up, was memorable for yeah, a different reason yeah. <laughs> it turned up on this and uh you know like no place or no time did andy you know really complain or say guys i want to go back you know he gave it all a go and there's some seriously difficult stuff there. Um, so that's one of the great things about riding with Andy is that, you know, we can always go off and try something a little bit more tricky and he, he gives it a go. Um, but in, in saying that, the few mods you have done on this bike, what, if you were back there again, you know, on your first camping trip, what were the first uh, mod you would have done to this bike? Uh, I didn't have the rack at that time. So it's, I just strapped everything on the, 
on the back rack okay. and things start falling off. I have okay. a loaf of bread and it just came <laughs> off and lucky someone found it so I didn't get hungry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and that actually creates a bit of danger, I think. Yeah. I think for an adventure bike where you take off-road, everything needs to be secure. That's 100% right. nothing falls off. Yeah. If you start walking around and stuff even, like that, you yeah. know, you start to look back and then you may fall off for no reason. Yeah, that's so. right. It's, it's, it's so worth think, investing. Yeah. investing some I money think there. the, what do you call it, the security of the, or the rigidness of the whole thing is, yeah. is, is a good mod. And is there anything else you want to do to it or are you pretty, pretty happy no, with that? No, I'm, right I'm, I'm quite content with this bike. It's very sublime to ride, easy. Yeah. Uh, okay, Andy, well, um, what's your YouTube channel? Oh, it's called First Light. Just first because uh, I like to go to see the first light. So yeah, nice. My... I'll um, link his channel and also I'll probably just mention you in the, in the title as well. Go cool. check out Andy's channel. He's got, he's always putting uh, actual adventures. He's always, he seems like you ride more than I do actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks for coming out and, and doing this. All right, uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for showing off your bike. I really love it. I think it's really awesome. Yeah. All right, cheers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>